Good afternoon. I welcome you to East Castle Place's weekly ecumenical worship service. I am Chaplain Harold Epley, and I'm glad you're tuning in to be with us today. It is June 21st in the year 2020, and uh, if you're keeping track of a church year calendar, this is the third Sunday after Pentecost, also the third Sunday of the month of June, and maybe more notably for some people, today is Father's Day. And being a dad myself, and uh, having a great memory of my own father, who's passed away many years ago, um, this is a special day for me, and I'm sure for you as well. We will begin our worship, as we always do, with a word of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our Defender, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. St. Paul writes, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Here ends our first reading. And our gospel reading for today is from St. Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. Jesus said to the twelve, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you have heard whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, 
and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So, were you listening closely to those words I just read from the Gospel of Matthew? If you were, then perhaps you are finding it a bit ironic that on this Father's Day, on this day when we honor those men whom we love and cherish the most, our Gospel lesson includes these words from Jesus. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now those aren't exactly the kind of words that make us feel good on Father's Day. They are troubling words, words we'd rather not hear on any day of the year. And yet, because Jesus spoke them, they are words that we need to reckon with, words that challenge us to put our lives in order. Many times we come to church hoping to find comfort in the midst of our hectic lives. And many times that is exactly what we find. We gather at worship with our friends, we sing beautiful hymns, that sends shivers down our spine. We hear familiar Bible passages like Jesus' words, My peace I give to you. Come to me, all you that are weary, and I will give you rest. We feel soothed and nourished as we gather at the communion table, knowing that God loves us and forgives us. In many and various ways, we find comfort and tranquility at worship. But we're mistaken if we think that's the only thing God wants us to find here. It's been said that Jesus comforts us when we are afflicted and afflicts us when we're feeling comfortable. And so if you tuned in today looking for some comfort, uh, you're probably on the wrong channel. But before you pick up that remote and tune into something else, I ask you to stay with me and struggle with me over Jesus' words, as difficult as they are to hear. For if we take Jesus' message in today's Gospel lesson to heart, our lives will be better for it. Let me start by saying, that Jesus frequently said things to shake up his listeners, to get their attention. And when he said that he came to set a man against his father, it surely gets our attention. But the heart of Jesus' message can be found in these words. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus is saying that he wants to be first in our lives. He wants to be more important than anyone or anything else, even those people we love the most. And Jesus is also saying that if we put him first, our lives will be better for it because Jesus can provide for us in a way that nobody else can, not even
than our closest loved ones. And the reason for that is simple. If you believe that Jesus is divine, that he is the Son of God, then you believe that he is eternal, that he lived and he still lives and he will live forever. But nothing that we can attain on this earth, whether it be money or prestige or good health, nothing we attain on this earth can last forever. And no person, no matter how wonderful, will live forever. We know that. Only Jesus lasts forever. And that's why we need to make him our top priority. Because Jesus will still be there for us when all the money is gone. And when death has taken our closest family members and friends. Now, of course, putting Jesus first is hard for most of us to do. Probably because the rewards for doing so are not always immediate. And sometimes putting Jesus first results in conflict. When Jesus said that he came to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, that's what he's talking about. Jesus' words here are descriptive, not prescriptive. He's telling us the way it is, not the way it should be. Jesus isn't telling us to go out and pick fights with our family. He's just describing what can happen when we make him our top priority. If we put Jesus before others, including our loved ones, sometimes those loved ones will object. Sometimes the result will be conflict. Conflict between parents and children, husbands and wives, even the best of friends. In a world where everyone and everything is vying for our attention, you can't put Jesus first without sometimes paying the consequences. And putting Jesus first takes some intentional planning on our part. Sometimes it means coming to worship, or taking time to pray or study the Bible, when we'd rather be doing something else. Or it means giving our money to help others when we'd rather be spending it on ourselves. But if we don't intentionally put Jesus first, we run a serious risk, the risk of forgetting about Jesus and barely making him a part of our life at all. An illustration that I recently came upon makes this point well. One day, an expert in time management was speaking to a group of business students. He stood in front of the class and said, time for a quiz. Then he pulled out a one-gallon wide-mouth mason jar, and he set it on the table in front of him. He produced about a dozen fist-sized rocks and carefully placed them one at a time into the jar. When the jar was filled to the top and no more rocks would fit inside, he asked, Is this jar full? Everyone in the class said, Yes. Really, replied the speaker. He reached under the table and pulled out a bucket of gravel. Then he dumped some gravel and shook the jar, causing pieces of the gravel to work themselves down into the space between the big rocks. He asked the group once again, Is the jar full? By this time, the class was on to him. Probably not, one of them answered. Good, he replied. He reached under the table again 
and brought out a bucket of sand. He started dumping the sand into the jar, and it went into all the spaces left between the rocks and the gravel. Once more he asked the question, Is this jar full? No, the class shouted. Once again he said, Good. Then he grabbed a pitcher of water and began to pour it into the jar until that jar was filled to the brim. Finally, he looked at the class and asked, What is the point of my illustration? One eager student raised his hand and said, The point is, no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really hard, you can always fit some more things into it. No, the speaker replied. That is not the point. The truth this illustration teaches us is, if you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get them in at all. Christians, Jesus needs to be that first rock in our jars. Yet too many of us try to squeeze him in around everything and everyone else. And so we only come to worship when we've got nothing better to do. We only take time to pray when nothing else seems to work. We only share our resources with others after we've taken more than we need ourselves. Yet remember, Christians, none of that other stuff, no matter what it is, will help us when we have come to the end of our lives. When we come to that time when we finally meet God face to face, well, only Jesus can help us then. So there you have it. Jesus' difficult message for this Father's Day, reminding us to put Him first, even when it means paying some consequences. So Christians, let's take Jesus' words in today's Gospel lesson to heart. Let's make serving Jesus and following in His way of always loving others, forgiving others, and giving thanks to God every day. For when all is said and done, it is a decision we will be glad we made. Amen. We continue now with our intercessory prayers, especially remembering those who are suffering because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray. O oh God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and our indifference that only makes us worry more when the virus threatens us. Open our ways 
beyond timidity and fear, so that we don't ignore our neighbors. Help us to continue to work for justice for all, especially for racial justice as we remember that black lives matter. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all who must travel. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they may speak the truth. Halt the spread of misinformation and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Heal our world. Heal our bodies. Strengthen our hearts and our minds. And in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love, O God. Amen. I invite you to join me in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Our closing hymn is, This is My Father's World, in honor of Father's Day and also in honor of this time of year when we celebrate God's creation with the beauty all around us. Hope you are being able to do that. And uh, we'll see you when you tune in again next week. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful week. And uh, this is My Father's World is sung by the Valparaiso University Chorale. God bless.